A lot of people have seen my studio and said, Daniel, that's a really cool setup. That must have taken a lot of time and effort to build something so big. Well, the reality is it's actually a really small space that I built over time to fit the needs as I grew as a creator. I've been promising that I would do a quick tour of the studio and talk about some of the gear I use. So let's do that today. So originally this entire space was only about a 12 and a half by eight and a half foot space. It had a little partition wall that kicked out that separated it from the kitchen and I had my office desk. There was a coat closet to the left of it, a bay window, a door going out onto the deck and another window. I got to the point where I wanted to make something cooler than what I had in terms of the look of my set. So I decided what I would do was gut that closet, rip everything out of it, build a new closet where the old desk was, add a sliding barn door in front of that closet, and then build a studio right inside of the closet that I gutted. That's what I originally called Studio A. The heart of my entire set is really a couple of custom PCs that I have down below Studio A. One is an AMD Ryzen custom build that I built myself, and the other one is one I bought from a creator I know, and it's an Intel NVIDIA custom build. I also have an M1 Mac Mini on top that allows me to work with programs that are Mac only, and do things that maybe my PCs can't for certain types of software. Now over time, I knew there was more I wanted to do with the room, but that took a little bit of effort, patience, and a little bit of money. So what I ended up doing was removing the large bay window that was behind me along this long wall, and I rebuilt it to be the back wall of my set for Studio B. <music> Studio B is made up of a custom motorized standing desk that I can either sit or stand at. I sort of Frankenstein my own top onto it because I didn't like the size or look of the tops that came with most of them. And then I had to figure out how to get all the gear I wanted here to work as efficiently as possible. I didn't want stands on the floor all around me, so a lot of the gear ended up being flown and hung from the ceiling. My powered studio monitor speakers, my main light, my cameras that I was using in front of me, my overhead boom mic, those are all hung from the ceiling above. Now the rest of my gear here is pretty much attached to the standing desk itself. I've got two different monitors. I've got my main studio mic, my laptop, my iPad Pro, and then my other gear for mixing my video and my audio all sits on top of my desk with me. Now I use multiple cameras at any given moment. Sometimes I'll use them for an alternative shot coming across the studio, but I also use them in different ways when I'm filming different types of content. For instance, in front of me, I have two identical cameras one that's set up for 16 by nine and the other one that's flipped up for nine by 16. That way I can film short form content and regular widescreen content all at the same time without having to move a camera. It's all just right there ready to go when I'm done filming, I've got both options. Now I do use different microphones depending on what I'm doing. Right here, I don't like having a mic in this shot when I'm making edited content. So I have the overhead mic for those situations. But when I'm live streaming, I'll use my Shure SM7B right here. It sounds really good when it's close to my mouth, not so good when it gets pushed away. The biggest trick is trying to figure out how to get all these cameras and different microphones to all work together in harmony so that when I film or when I live stream, I've got full control of all of these different pieces and can mix them and use them in any way that I want. Now on this desk, I used to have both a Rodecaster Pro and an ATEM Mini Pro ISO. Now, I don't know if you know what each of those pieces are, but the Rodecaster basically handled all of my audio signaling going into my system, and the ATEM Mini Pro basically handled all of the camera signals, the video signals that came into my systems when I was filming or live streaming. Now the problem I had with them is sometimes they didn't always sync up perfectly and there was some work to be done to make sure that they worked together in unison, but they were also missing some features I really wanted to have, like the ability to take an audio signal and pan it left and right, or the ability to take a stereo line in and mix it into what I was doing when I might be recording some audio. Simple things like that you would think these pieces handled, but surprisingly they often didn't. No. There were some weird things too, like the A10 Mini Pro, as much as I like it, didn't have simple things like an on off switch. So a lot of times I had to leave it running when I wanted to shut my studio down. But recently my friends at Sweetwater sent me out a Roland VR One HD. And it basically does most of the things that those two other units did, but combined. 
It has audio inputs and video inputs that are easily synced together. It also has basic things like stereo ins and the ability to pan my audio. So when I'm doing things like recording guitars or doing audio and sounds for the backgrounds of my videos, I have a lot more control with this unit. The other thing I like about it, it has a lot of the onboard effects like pitch changing and reverb and the ability to switch scenes between cameras nice and smoothly. It does picture and picture and split screen and all those kind of things that I would use in different situations. But one of the things I really like about this unit is it sits neatly on my desktop and it's only about a third of the size of those other two combined. It also works a little differently. I'm used to the Rodecaster Pro having a little display screen that allows me to get into the functionality of the Rodecaster. The ATEM Mini Pro, I actually have to use a separate laptop in software to actually get into the functions. This unit has no display, but I run a smaller mini monitor right in front of it and that allows me to get not only into all the menu functions, but now I can see all the different camera angles right in front of me with the click of a button. No more trying to have to look at those little flip out screens that are half a mile away for an old man like me. I think the thing that really sold me on this was the price point too. The Rodecaster Pro is about a $600 unit. The A10 Mini Pro is about an $800 unit. You're talking $1,400 just out of the gate without the other things that you'll need to really effectively use those tools. What I liked about the VR1 HD is it's under $1,000 right out of the box. And with the exception of adding on the smaller monitor, which I thought was the right choice for this unit, it pretty much has everything you need right in front of you. But here's my favorite part. It has an on off switch. If you're interested in learning more about this unit, I'm gonna leave a link down below where you can check out more of the specs and see if it's something that might be right for you. As we move forward on the channel, I'll be talking more about the different gear that might be important to you as a creator trying to make content for YouTube. There's just so much. I'll do my best to get to all of that. And if there's anything specific that you want me to cover, be sure to shout it out in the comments below. Now, if you wanna learn more about how to make better video content, put it onto YouTube and grow a YouTube channel, check out the video that's on screen now or the one I'll link down below. Thanks for hanging out in the studio with me today. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.